good afternoon to all of you. I think I'm going into a different, uh, which is the need of the hour. Um, so, uh, well, um, yes. Now, one thing that all of us should understand that waste is only misplaced resource in a man-made world. One creature's waste, so that is some its resources to feed the ecosystem. Now, the most important thing that what a campus in an educational institution can do is it is the place where learning happens. Hence, inculcation of swatch habit is very, very important. And it is the duty of the educational institution to bring about that habit and to inculcate that habit in the individual. So habit inculcation is possible through experience and practice. A green campus aims to make environmental awareness and action an integral part of the life. So what should a higher educational institution or university can do? Build consensus on need for maintaining a clean and green campus among campus leaders at student level, faculty level, and campus level. Second, Facilitate design for specific intervention for making the campus clean and green by following international standards and that is accepted parameters. Monitor the existing environmental performance in the campus in a participation and a transparent way. Present a step-by-step -step guide for making the campus clean and green. Generate case study on best swatcha practices adopted on the campus, which can serve as a model for other institutions to adopt. And the most important thing is the leader. So the leadership plays a very, very important role. So therefore, a green campus in initiative can be a successful only if the head of the institution ignites the spirit in each and every body in the organization. He or she must direct the departments, paying attention to find the students' team and ensure that their valuable suggestions are followed. A motivated leader can bring a sea of change in the system and therefore he or she is the cornerstone of the campaign. So the most important person in the entire green initiative in the campus is the leader. Am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, Hello? yes, you are audible. Please continue. Am you I audible? audible? Yeah, yeah, you are audible. Please you continue. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the most important thing, as I said, the leader is very, very important. Now, I would like to share what are the different steps that could be taken up to start this whole green initiative you know, campaign? The first thing is that we have to start with an environmental policy. We have to create an environmental policy such that the stakeholders are to be involved in drafting a policy document covering the sustainable use of resources on the campus and sustainable management of the waste. So uh, the first thing is that the leader and the organization and the team have to come out with the environmental policy. So this environmental policy is very, very important to be created before you start taking up a green initiative in the campus. Now, you may be wondering, why should we go about doing this green initiative? Now, as the NAC, you know, uh, really challenges us with the with you know with the entire uh, documentation of the process now you have 100 marks okay which can be you know which can be uh, taken into account so once you have a proper green initiative in your organization in place it makes a lot of difference okay with the stakeholder and also inculcating the right uh, you know right habit to the uh, to in the individual so i'll just give you uh, for example the you know the uh, uh, the environmental policy in our college okay so the environmental policy is to work towards the integrity of creation and foster interconnectedness kinship and ecosystems 
thereby causing no or less damage to the environmental integrity of local, regional, and global ecosystem, and also ensure sustainability of all natural resources for future generation, right? So this is the environmental policy that was being developed in our institution, right? Okay, so how do we go about the, the, uh, the right way of doing the whole thing is that you have to have the document which contains at least the, these following aspects. So the first one is where you have sanitation and hygiene policies, maintenance of cleanliness and utilization of monitoring process. Then you have water cons conservation policy, optimum use of water and reuse of treated water saving appliances and water recycling. Then you have to have a policy of rainwater harvesting, waste management policy, which includes the five R principles, which is reduce, reuse, recycle, refuse, and regenerate. Right. So, uh, in such a way, uh, into the landfills. So, therefore, the waste management policy is a, one of the important policy that has to be taken into account. Then you have to have an energy conservation policy. Now, with, when you're talking about energy conservation, you're talking about introduction of solar energy, reduction in energy consumption through proper technology and management process. Okay, so I'll be dealing with a few examples how you would be going about, you know, having these policies. Then similarly, you should have a greening policy. Now, what do you? What is this greening policy? Is that it's mandatory that every institution should have about minimum of thirty percent of green cover in their institution. So you need to you, you need to concentrate on this, uh, you know, improvement of the green cover in your organization. And similarly, uh, the most important thing is that you should have a student activity policy where you could involve the student in various cultural programs and also with reference to the student activities in the community. So these are the important parameters that you could think about in coming out of the policy. Right now, what is the different steps in coming out with the uh, with coming out with a, you know a team who could be involved in the in the entire green initiative? Now, the most important thing is we have to have bring in the students into our into our loop. Okay. So the first important step is student selection. So student selection, we're basing based on personal interaction, the community responsibility, basic swachata, health and hygiene, and also have current knowledge, uh, you know, uh, with, uh, with reference to the local news and sustainability, and have an idea about their local environment. Right. So the uh, uh, the important thing is that target related to waste management. Okay. So uh, the team should be involved who are involved with waste management, good sanitation, hygiene practices, water conservation practices, campus greenery, and energy conservation. So you have to create a team who are you know involved with these. Uh, activities. So after creating that, well, uh, the different steps that is involved is uh, basically where you have to have a social media, okay, create a social media platforms involving member or swatch team from different departments across the campus. This will enhance the participation and aid in proper conduct of the program. So we have to create a social media like maybe the Instagram or maybe the, you know, the uh, web page, or you can also have a create a Facebook account so that that would help you to, you know, uh, to, uh, to be active in social media and tell the people and your, you know, your uh, teammates, your, you know, your organization and the parents and the society as to what you're doing. So you have to be active on the social media. Then the next important step would be orientation of the students group to the Swachata activity. Then uh, 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 the step four would be mapping the campus survey and ground truth truthing. And step five would be identifying area of immediate action. 
Step six would be planning intervention activity. Step seven would be education and awareness. Step eight is implementation of Swachh campus. Now, uh, after doing all this, there should be an important thing of record keeping and supervision. So the most important thing is once you have uh, documented your records, you need to analyze uh, the action plan, right? So once the action plan is being taken up, there, should, there is the importance of feedback and review. Okay, so I would like to, you know, actually wanted to share the, you know, the green uh, campus initiative that is in the campus. I will just try uh, again to share my, uh, you know, my video because only when I share, you know, you'll be able to see what we are doing. So give me uh, but, one uh, again. You, you will have to get your technology in place because otherwise, you know, uh, you will you will lose connection because. Okay. The, the, yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, maybe you can share the video with us afterwards. We will we will yeah. uh, share it with all the participants. Yeah, sure. Later on. Okay. So let uh oh, fine. I think I'll go ahead with as you you know requested. Uh, okay. So what are the initiatives that's being done in our campus? Now, first thing is with reference to the you know waste segregation. Okay. So when you're talking about the solid waste management, now the most important thing that should be done is that where you have your, you know, the solid waste has to be segregated in the right way, okay, at the source. So at the source, you have to segregate the solid waste into the, you know, organic and inorganic. So once you segregate, and what are we doing in our campus is that we are trying to, uh, you know, uh, use the uh, organic waste for various, you know, for the, for the purpose of generating your, you know, your compost. Now, how is this being done? Now, this is being done. Now, what we have done is we have come up with a specific bacteria called as thermophilic bacteria. Now, this thermophilic bacteria is being utilized in the organic waste converter. Now, this organic waste converter, which, uh, which uses high temperature, Okay, temperature of around you know 60 degrees, where the entire food base along with the leaf litter is being you know is being uh, 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 you know is it's being uh, churned, and there is this thermophilic bacteria, and within 48 hours you're getting your your compost. So that is one strategy of how you could you know convert your organic waste into your compost. So the other strategy is we have used vermicompost uh, you know bins. The vermicompost bins are uh, basically what we have done is we are using the leaf litter and that is farmyard manure along with the cow dung. Okay, now that is being uh, taken and uh, allowed in a in a huge you know in a kind of a two by two uh, pit. Now that pit where you are adding the organic uh, you know farmyard manure or farmyard waste, or maybe the leaf litter that you have in your campus, along with the comp uh, your cow dung, and in, uh, you add water for around 10 days, you allow it to undergo aerobic uh, degradation. So once there is aerobic degradation, what happens is that there is a kind of a, you know, a, a kind of a, a degradation that is happening and then you we add in the earthworms okay the specific red earthworms are being added and within 40 days you get your vermicompost so this is one of the techniques that is being utilized to convert or to you know to utilize your solid waste apart from that uh, this uh, manure that is being uh, generated in your organization can be sold to the students and to the you know to the staff you have to document that so there is a kind of an entrepreneur, uh, you know, initiative that is being, uh, you know, that is being uh, formed. Now that could be one of the strategy. Now the other strategy is with reference to your, you know, if well, with reference to your e-waste that is being generated. So the e-waste that is being, uh, you know, generated has to be collected and has to be channelized in a proper channel, okay, where uh, you have certain, uh, you know, uh, certain organization which are being licensed by the Pollution Control Board. Now, they collect this e-waste and then it has to be documented. So, the e-waste goes into a proper channel so that, you know, you're not, it is not going to the landfill and properly handled. So, uh, that is uh, one of the important source. Apart from that, you also have, you know, a kind of the concept of reduce 
using the paper waste now especially you could you know document things like having an advertisement or maybe when you having uh, the concept of you know your uh, college uh, magazines which can go digital as mam was just talking about you know going digital so you can have your most of the you know advertisements most of the magazine can go in the e format and similarly when you have the college union uh, celebrations it can go digital so in that way you are trying to reduce your solid waste uh that is very very important and uh, so the way you are you have to uh, you know document everything okay every solid waste that is coming out from the institution to which uh, you know uh, uh, you know which organization you are selling what is the amount has to be documented and it has to be given into your given to the uh, you know given to the uh, uh, to the nac uh, 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 you know where you are able to write down those uh, details so everything has to be documented with reference to the solid waste now apart from that the most important thing is now the energy we are talking about energy conservation so energy conservation is also a very important uh, you know criteria in the green initiative now what is the energy con conservation now uh, the nac is looking at the concept of renewable energy and the best form of renewable energy could be your you know could be your um, tapping of your solar energy through various solar panels the solar panels uh, you know which generates the uh, you know through the photovoltaic cells the uh, the solar uh, cells which generates the electricity and this electricity goes into the grid right so in that way you are trying to harness the renewable energy and apart from that you have to come out with a kind of a technique where you could have sign boards okay sign boards near the you know near the uh, uh, the uh, switch boards where you label that uh, going into a concept of switch off mode so it's mandatory that you have to put it in your staff room okay in the staff room you can put a label of uh, you know uh, the labels of switch off mode of the computers when not in use right you can you have to take an audit you have to come out with an energy audit now how do we go about energy audit now you can have a kind of a team of students who are involved in creating an energy audit so you can have a kind of an excel sheet where the amount of energy consumed can be documented and the amount of you know energy uh, the electricity being consumed and the uh, amount being paid so you can come out with a graph so the you know this uh, energy audit is very very important which has to be documented by the the green brigade or the green team that you have uh, started off with right so you can create you can take off with the energy audit so this energy audit helps you in the entire process and apart from that you have the other process like uh, with reference to water conservation now water conservation very importantly the nac looks into the kind of the rain water harvesting being done okay so the rain water harvesting concept is very very important this rain water harvesting could be done with the terrain okay you have you can study the terrain and see how the water uh, you know the the flow of the water you can either have two concept one concept is recharge pit okay so the the institution can create a recharge pit where the water terrain the flow of the water can get into the recharge pit and increase the ground water level or it could be a concept where you could collect the rain water uh, you know through uh, pass it through filters and this rain water can be used for flushing the toilets that is what is done in our institution where we collect the rain water and it is used to flush the toilets apart from that the rain water also could be used for you know the gardening purpose now that is something which you could think about the concept of conservation of the rain water and apart from that if you have a borewell okay if you have a ground water source as your drinking water it's mandatory that you have to check the total dissolved solid of the of the you know of the ground water if the ground water total dissolved solid is more than 300 uh, ppm then you have to install a you know a um a kind of a you know water filter so the reverse osmosis or the ro filter can be installed now this ro water which is installed the uh, you know the waste discharge water can be used for washing 
Now, what we have seen is that uh, RO water the has a high alkalinity. So it could be used for washing the places or it could pass through a kind of a, you know, a kind of a, uh, you know, root treatment plant where you have these, uh, you know, phytoremediation process could be used and you could, you know, send the water into your, into your groundwater. So the, there should be a conscious uh, team. If you have a chemistry department, the department students can be taken up as a project. Okay. The, the environmental science students can take up as a project where you can display the water quality of the RO. Okay. So in our institution, all the water is being tested every month and is displayed on the screen for reference to the water quality. The water quality could be with reference to mandatory, with reference to the TDS and the E. coli. Now, why E. coli? E. coli is because E. coli is an indicator organism that the, there is a sewage contamination. As we know, E. coli is a habitant of all the organism. Okay, all the warm-blooded organism has the E. coli. And therefore, what happens is that there is the there is a kind of a, you know, if the water has E. coli, that means there is a sewage contamination. And that means your RO water does not has a good UV, uh, you know, the UV bulb is not working. So there's a need to call in for service. So therefore, it is we have to understand with reference to the hygiene aspect that we are supplying good water. And once you're supplying good water and you're very sure about it, you can come out with completely no bottles or no sale of bottled water in your institution. So therefore, in our institution, we do not sell bottled water. And because of this, what happens is that the student and the teachers, they bring their own bottles early in the morning, they collect the water and they use it in their departments. So therefore, you're reducing the solid waste. So that could be one of the strategies. Apart from that, you also could have some of the fixtures which are which reduce the amount of loss of water, right? Uh, I mean, uh, with reference to you know the flow of water, you can have some kind of a sensors, right? The, now these sensors will help you to allow you to reduce the uh, you know the wastage of water. Now that is with reference to your you know your with reference to your water conservation. Now apart from that, you have the concept of uh, when we are talking about uh, you know the water conservation. Now we are also talking about the important thing is that you can take about a green audit. Now what is a green audit? Now as a you know as a life science student. You can involve the life science student to take a green audit. Okay, so each and every plant can be labeled. Okay, now you can label each and every trees and every plant. Right now, this is very very important because now when you label these plants, now you may say, uh, uh, I mean, a botany student does not know any of the how to label it. So what you could uh, help the student is that you can have, uh, you know, ask them to download an app called as the Note Cam. Okay, a uh, Note Cam is an uh, is an app which will uh, which will uh, geotag your plant. Okay, so when you're taking a photo, there is the latitude, longitude, and the position okay so therefore that geotag is very very important and that creates the you know that gives you the uh, what you call as the uh, geotag of your plant and then use a google lens okay so when you use a google lens what happens is that the google lens um, you know that google lens will tell you the name of the plant so you can come out with the geotagging and naming of the plants, right? So that helps in the, you know, a kind of, a, you know, a mapping the biodiversity of your area. So these are some of the things that, you know, that could be taken up by the organization, right? And apart from that, the institutions should check up on sanitary waste hygiene. Okay, so the organization or when uh, when the you know the NAC visitors they come, they look in for especially if it's uh, you know they look into the way you're handling the sanitary waste disposal. Okay, so there is a need for looking into you know the availability of sanitary pads. Do you have a vending machine or do you have a you know a stationary shop which sells in the sanitary pads, right? Okay, and also how you are you know how you are uh, are able to uh, to you know uh, able to dispose your sanitary pads right by the uh, incineration process or is some organization coming and collecting it? 
Okay, now that could be done. Apart from that, the, the way you have your, you know, the concept of using the organic food uh, in the, in the, your, uh, you know, in your cafeteria. So the cafeteria, so as the, as the leader, or as the principal, it is important that the cafeteria gives in, uh, um, you know, gives in uh, important, uh, you know, the available uh, organic food. Okay, or the local food. So they have to, you know, like I know the institutions where they are giving them the local food and there is no, you know, sale of uh, things like burgers and all that, right? So uh, you should be conscious of uh, giving uh, seasonal foods, local foods that can be initiated, right? Apart from that, uh, there are other things like, you know, the uh, green activities with adopting the lakes or, you know, getting into the society and taking uh, part in the whole process. So um, um, that is uh, something which we could take about. 